me hit the recording. And yeah, okay. Uh, hi everyone. This is I'm Edwin Rutch, and uh, this is our empathy training uh, team. So I just wanted to, before we get started, just introduce it uh, to everyone who might watch this in the future. Encourage you to uh, take part. So with this empathy training team, our goal here is to build a online empathy training and we're forming teams of six people to uh, work through the uh, book uh, called Listening Well, which is a book on how to do empathic listening. And uh, part of our project is to go through the book, uh, read the chapters, have do uh, empathic listening on the topic uh, that are brought up in the book, as well as uh, create an online training, empathy training, and a MOOC. And a MOOC is a massively online uh, course. And uh, so we invite you, if you're watching this, to uh, join us and join a, an empathy team. You can uh, find out more about this project by looking in the, uh, the, uh, in the description topic that comes with this video, or check the website, uh, empathy tent.com and there'll be more information about this uh, project. So with that said, as an introduction, greeting our uh, viewers, uh, I'd like to uh, just start with uh, two minutes of uh, a little bit of silence for us to connect uh, with ourselves, uh, a little bit of mindfulness, and I'm going to hit the timer here. We're going to take just two minutes to Breathe deeply, uh, connect uh, with our own, you know, feel into our, how we're doing. Just, we've, uh, we had a lot of, you know, coming from different areas. We just want uh, different places and we just want to uh, have a little bit of self-connection here. So, just take a little, two minutes of silence. Okay, if you want to come back to the group, that was our two minutes. And uh, so we want to get started. This is our first meeting. You know, not everybody's met everyone uh, else yet. So we want to start off with uh, uh, just like a 30, quick 30 minute uh, introduction, uh, about 30 second introduction. And uh, just your name, your location, and, and how you feel right now. and, and uh, I can model it. Uh, my name is Edwin Rutsch. I'm in El Cerrito, which is in the San Francisco uh, Bay Area. And I'm feeling excited about starting this group and uh, feel a little anxious because I've had some crashes with Zoom and I'm worried that it's going to crash at any moment. <laughs> so a little bit of anxiety, but also excitement about uh, forming this new group. And we can just go down. Uh, Rita, would you like to? Rita Charny, I am um, a mediator, bilingual, I speak French and English. I, um, I live in Toronto, Ontario, Canada, and excitement is really the 
um, the feeling I have also about about this uh, this course, and, and I'm really um, I'm really uh, fascinated by empathy and 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 love the concept of getting together to uh, to dive into the concept, play with it, and eventually develop a course. I mean. <laughs> Great. Um, Jessica? Hi, uh, I'm Jessica Vogt. I also live in Toronto, Canada. I'm friends with Rita and we work together as well. I'm a, I'm a leadership and life coach, bilingual as well, French and English. And uh, I am feeling a, a bit overwhelmed and also I'm slowly settling in. The two minutes felt good. I'm curious to know, I've never been part of this and this kind of scale before of creating a training online, it sounds so amazing. And I'm super excited and curious and a bit confused about how it's going to happen. Um, and I feel part of something big and it feels, it feels really like great. <laughs> mm. well, thanks. Uh, Vince? Hi, I'm Vicence from, I live in Mallorca in Spain. And I'm expectant uh, about how this is going to work. I, I, I already told Edwin that I, I'm not sure about the book, but I'm interested in the project. So that's where I am now. Okay, uh, Bunny. Um, I'm Bunny McFarlane. I am a colleague of Rita's. I am in the Niagara region in Canada and close to Toronto. I'm a mediator and I have just um, begun a business on um, grief support. So empathy will be a major component of the um, service that I'll be offering. And I'm excited, as Jessica and Rita are. I'm also honored to be here. Um, and I'm a bit apprehensive because um, I'm not up to date on your work, Edwin. I apologize. Um, I would like to know more. So I'm, I'm a knowledge seeker and very excited to be here. Hmm, thank you. And uh, Pauline? Hello, I finally oh. made it. Oh, great. <laughs> yeah, everything's working. We see you, we hear you. So it looks like the connection was yeah. made. <laughs> yeah, I'm just uh, noticing my camera is in a strange position, but I'm just going to leave it for now. Okay, so uh, we're just doing introductions. Uh, you know, your name, where you're from, uh, just how you're feeling at the moment. Cool. Um, yeah, I'm Pauline Mickleham. So I'm from Scotland and I'm very excited to be here and I'm relieved that I was able to get the connections working. I feel really called to be part of work that's around um, how to develop empathy and compassion within organisations and within political structures that really resonates with the, with the work that I do. Um, so yeah, just lovely to be here. Okay, thank you. So, and when everyone arrived, they were we wrote uh, on the question of why are you interested in taking this uh, this uh, training and uh, course development project. So we wanted to go now and take you know a couple of minutes each to share what uh, we wrote and. Uh, and um, you can just, if you, if you haven't had a chance to write it, you can write it now or just kind of ad lib as, as you would like. And so I, I can start just to uh, model it. Um, so uh, for me, you know, why, why am I wanting to do this, uh, this work? I've been doing it for about uh, over 10 years, you know, working on the topic of uh, empathy and I just saw, uh, I was right as I wrote here on Frontline, which is a American news uh, on a TV show, they, they showed the ethnic cleansing that's happening in, of the Rohingya in, uh, in Myanmar. And they were just showing really the horrors of, of what's happening there, as well as uh, 
the uh, when when I grew up, my my family came from uh, Germany, from, but from the eastern part. So they were they went through uh, you know through World War II, and family members were killed and raped. And I you know I heard all those uh, kind of stories, which are you know very similar to what that program was about. So. Uh, when I kind of discovered empathy, I just found that, uh, you know, it's like I really see it as that we need this, the empathy for creating, a, you know, a better, uh, more caring world. And so I've sort of dedicated the rest of my life to uh, doing that. And, you know, I've been doing this for a while. And I see that there's no really good empathy training uh, online. And uh, so I'm wanting to kind of address that. So that's really the, you know, the kind of the impetus for me wanting to create this training is just to make something that's very easily accessible uh, for everyone is online. And uh, it's like a, a MOOC, which is a massively online open course, just something that, you know, can scale up. And um, also hoping that this is something that, you know, I want to contribute that anyone can take or that uh, as facilitators, we can also, you know, facilitate this and, you know, so it can be self-sustaining. So for, you know, for the financial aspect of it. So, so we can create a, a movement for building more uh, empathy in the world. So that's yeah. kind of the core of, uh, you know, why I'm um, doing this. And if we just go down the list here, what, what people wrote there, Rita, you're uh, next. Um, and talking about um, a culture of empathy uh, uh, and the movement, I'm, I'm, I just love being part of that movement. Uh, uh, Edwin, you know, you know, I love your work and uh, uh, I was part of, of uh, the, the training you did on empathy circles and I've been almost obsessed with it in, in the sense that uh, <laughs> you say yes because um, I see the potential in any group of people and and not only I see the potential but I see a, a very easy quick connection when we do use empathic listening it, it's almost magical um and i don't like to use that word and at the same time it is impressive how fast it can be learned needs to be practiced and and uh, and i love to um engage in finding a way to to really help people grow with it and um my idea is also that uh, uh, ch children as sponges and they can learn it really fast if we give them the opportunity so bringing it at school uh, would be just just amazing and mm. uh, yeah so it's um, I uh, I look forward to wherever we are going to go as as a group thank you for being there <laughs> I was muted, so, uh, and that's also, if you're not speaking, it's good to uh, mute just so we kind of eliminate any kind of feedback, and to mute, there's a little button on the lower left-hand corner, but then you got to remember to turn it on when we're speaking. So, uh, Jessica, would you go next? Sure. Um, why am I interested in this training is because I, I'm coming from communication. Like I'm me, I'm obsessed with communication um, or like growing up with, uh, I feel um, a lot of um, issues around that. Like I, I grew up in a family, I grew up with deaf parents, both of them, and they didn't really want to teach us, my siblings and I, their language. Um, it's very complicated around shame and guilt. So there was a lot of heavy stuff, lots of misunderstanding. And I felt I spent my childhood trying to guess what other people were, were expecting from me, what trying to say or whatever. Um, and now I, I lived in Ireland and lived in, in, in Canada. Like I, I learned a second language. Like communication is very central for me. And I always try to think um, as humans, like what is the main thing that really can bring joy can really makes um can 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 we get how can we get over this shame and this guilt and and during my research doing like 
uh, listening people like Brené Brown and Marshall Rosenberg from a, a nonviolent communication. Like it all comes down to my, what I found that it all came down to first you need to connect and, and the entry to that is empathy. So I believe it's key. I believe it's central in you, in our human species, in, in relationships. And, um, that's why I'm here because I think we're doing, we're doing something that is game changer and it is gonna, and this is what I want. I want to be able to, Rita mentioned a culture, like I don't want just a training where people are going to be like, okay, good. Like I, I can use that and go and do it in my work. Like I, I want companies built on that idea of like, um, this is how we connect. So that's why I'm here. <laughs> Nice, thanks. Uh, sense? So why am I here? I, I, I am a school psychologist by training and a mediator, and I have been working for, for many years, well, for all my career in, in schools. I'm now retired, recently retired. And, uh, and you know, uh, I, I have been doing a lot of trainings around restorative practices and mediation, school mediation, basically. and. Uh, and I keep doing that. And I recently started a, a training via Zoom, using Zoom. So using this ability to uh, put people in small groups and then going back to get to the hall, to the, to the big room and so forth. And, you know, and, and I like to see if it's possible because I'm not sure it's possible, but if it's possible to do uh, a MOOC without without this interaction this interact i mean either personal interaction or interaction via uh, zoom or other media so i'm curious to see if we are able to for, to like to slice communication uh, in skills and and really be able to to find ways to facilitate these uh, skills the acquiring these skills and also to like to have like a, your like booklet, like saying I'm able to do this and this and this and this. So I'm just curious, uh, and so so let's see, let's see what happens. Okay. So see what happens. Great, uh, Pauline, just wanna. Uh, okay. Um, yeah, um, as I was saying, I'm, I'm really uh, delighted to be here. It feels quite synchronous to come across uh, your message, Edwin, the call uh, to create the course. I've been participating in ULAB now for three years. I don't know if you're familiar with that MOOC. That is now in 170 countries. <laughs> um, and it has convinced me that experiential learning is possible online and um, at a scale. Um, and I, I wouldn't have known that before had I not participated in ULAB. Um, a lot of practices within uh, ULAB are around empathy and deep listening and generative uh, conversations. I'm also um, a, a novice art of hosting practitioner, so using lots of different technologies to host empathic and uh, connected conversations across uh, you know, different cultures or different opinions. And the work that I do specifically within local government is about how to have those kinds of dialogues where people become quite entrenched in debate and moving from debate to dialogue is something that I'm actively working on, which requires listening and holding back judgment and just being able to get a sense of where someone is really coming from and trying to step into that place in order for something new to emerge. So um, yeah, I'm very excited about all the cross fertilization that I might see in this course and, and what I can contribute and it's a really worthwhile project. Okay, thank you. Uh, Bunny? Um, first of all, Vincent, we're going to have to talk about restorative work because that is definitely one of my passions. But I guess uh, I could say that living with a lack of empathy um, a great deal of my life, now there is this experience of 
this cross-fertilization as Pauline spoke about it, um, between um, empathy and listening and words and love and kindness and um, mediation that I do, um, it's, it's all intertwined. Um, and the, the component that, that brought me to this place of understanding how intertwined everything is, is the loss of my son. Um, the lack of empathy I felt um, when losing a child was astounding to me. It was um, another level of understanding how difficult it is for people to connect with another and understand what it's like to be um, in their shoes. And even the listening part was not happening. It was a complete shutdown. Um, so my dealing with a lack of empathy in that situation um, initiated a, um, the motivation for me to offer my capacity to uh, listen as a mediator and a restorative practitioner. And with the experience of having lost a child, that uh, it is really important for me to try and fill the gap that I felt was completely present in grief. There's such a challenge in grief to be able to use words that have um, good meaning that aren't simply trite and, and traditionalistic and, and without really any heart. And to be able to not, not really, even if you can't understand the experience of another, that you be able to listen, that you give them that gift. I have come to the conclusion that it's a gift. So I am hoping to uh, learn uh, better the skill of empathy and listening um, in my um, new uh, business online or uh, support services, grief support services. So I'm hoping to be able to bring that to the world. Okay, thank you. So um, thank you all for, for the, uh, sharing your uh, reasons for uh, taking part in this uh, project. So what I wanted to do uh, next is give an overview of the project. We did that a bit, uh, you know, a couple of weeks ago with a few of us. But I wanted to, since not everyone did it, wanted to review it again. And so I want to give a bit of an overview, go through uh, a, a web, pa web page that, you know, I put together just give a quick overview, and then to uh, share the website, you know, create a, a, a website, and there's a lot of uh, tools there and areas that we can work on, and then uh, uh, review uh, how, to, how to do the empathic listening process or the empathy circle process, and then go into uh, talking about uh, using empathic listening to dialogue uh, about uh, the preface, the empath listening book, uh, the uh, preface, chapter one and chapter two. And usually during the meetings, we'll be you know, doing more of the empathic listening uh, component. But since this is our first meeting, we're going to do a little bit of uh, sort of preparatory, you know, technical background uh, work here. And so let me bring up the page here. I'm going to share it, and let's see. Edwin, I'm embarrassed to ask the question. Is yep. it a record? Is it a? How do we attain your book? How do we acquire the book? Oh, this one, listening well. It's by uh, William Miller. It should be on Amazon. 
Okay. Um, so, uh, and I'll be going, just giving a quick summary of the, of the book, of the chapters uh, before okay. we go dig into it. So you get a little bit of a sense if you haven't had a chance to read it yet. Uh, and uh, uh, William Miller, uh, he's been working in this field for about over 40 years. He started back with Carl Rogers. Uh, and uh, he developed something called motivational interviewing, which is based on empathic listening. So he, he has a lot of experience. And, uh, you know, it's just, the book is just a jumping off point. It gives us something to kind of work off of and gives sort of a structure and you don't have to agree with, you know, every, uh, every part of it or, you know, in our other group, team one, everybody has different views on it. And so it's just a, it's just a jumping off point to start a, a discussion. Okay. Thank so, you. Yeah. Let me, I think this is the right one here. So this should be sharing. And okay. So this is a, just something I wrote up a, a bit of a, uh, overview of the um, of what we're doing and I want to put this into a slideshow so this is just a rough draft so a lot of what we're doing is still just you know initial prototype and we're going to be continuously working on these prototypes making you know refining and refining so this is uh, just the uh, beginning introduction so the intention of this uh, group has been to uh, uh, use this book, uh, Listening Well, uh, to develop an empathy training curriculum and MOOC. And if you're, I don't know if everyone's familiar with what a MOOC is, but it's a, a massively online, uh, open online course. And uh, these courses, uh, the universities are creating uh, these, uh, I think like Pauline was saying, taking um, the, uh, I can't remember the name of the course, but they, the, the uh, group there, the, uh, what's it called uh, when you're taking? ULab? ULab, right, taking the ULab. I've, I've done that in, in person, but they also have an online course. And then, for example, uh, the Greater Good Science Center at UC Berkeley, they created an online MOOC, basically, for happiness. And it's had well over 100,000 know, people who have taken the course. So that's the uh, model. The uh, process is uh, each person in the team uh, develops a training. You know, we're going to read a couple chapters of the book a week and then uh, use the empathy circle, you know, empathic listening process to discuss the uh, chapters. So we'll get a chance to, uh, you know, read the material and then use empathic listening to kind of deepen our, our skills uh, while we read, a, read about it. And then, um, we can take notes of our discussions, and uh, we had done a previous uh, project like this on the Karen Armstrong's book, The 12 Steps to Compassion, uh, but it wasn't quite a, a how-to book, and I wasn't very satisfied with it, so I'm quite pleased with the Listening Well book, and in, in that it's really about the how to do empathic listening, which is really, the I think, the starting point for, you know, a lot of uh, empathy work. We're going to be recording uh, because we're putting this online and we'll be putting it on Facebook. And as I mentioned, our first one that we recorded received 200 views in, in the past week on Facebook. Uh, the problem we're addressing is there's currently no empathy training. I mean, really good training. There's a lot of NBC material, uh, but it has a very NBC sort of focus and it's not just I, I find it really easily accessible on the internet. Um, at least that's from my experience. And the overall vision, which uh, I think Jessica was addressing, is it's not kind of, we're not going just for this individualistic empathy uh, training where we learn how to, to listen for ourselves and go out there, but we're looking at really how do we change the culture, be it the culture in our families, uh, you know, in a, in a business, in a school, in the society. So it's, it's looking at the, the broader relational empathy and building a, framing it within uh, building a culture of empathy. And this book isn't really geared necessarily towards building a culture of empathy, but it's something we want to um, use as a path uh, towards that. 
uh, towards that vision. And also that it's that we're moving towards an activism oriented empathy. So we've been doing that. I've been since 2013 been using the empathy tent. So I've got this tent that we go and set up in public spaces. We've been at the so-called battles of Berkeley, where uh, the political left and the political right have come, you know, to blows, to fist fights, to everything in Berkeley. And we set up the empathy tent. We offer empathic listening, you know, mediation, dialogue, and. Uh, We've been talking with our congressman just last week. We met with our congressman about uh, holding some empathy circles with him. And we've done other kind of political kind of action, holding a, a forum with, uh, we call it the Radical Empathy Forum, with 11 candidates who are running for the local state assembly uh, here in California. And we did two hours of them doing empathy circles together. So. It, it's it's that uh, social activism aspect too. We want to create this as open source, so it's something that you know anybody not, well, can sort of contribute to. So we want to bring other co communities and groups in to contribute. I've been talking with the Center for Person Centered Approach. Uh, you know, Carl Rogers Institute. They're talking about you know being like sponsors or advisors or contributors to this. Um, the time commitment is we're meeting for at least six weeks, two hour meetings, and six weeks isn't going to be enough to get through the book, so we'll might have to extend, might be extending that. And uh, we'd form teams of six people, and uh, so there's some participant requirements. So that's the uh, kind of the basic overview, and just to me check if there's any kind of comments or questions about that. Anybody want to say, respond to that? And yeah. just, just, just to say that I think it's just a really exciting project and I really applaud the way that you're going about it because I know you have other groups set up. So I think that kind of uh, cross connection and what will be generated and how that will be shared between the groups. Um, it's a really democratic, it's modeling a really democratic and empathic way of working, as well as creating content that's about empathy. So, yeah. Oh, thanks. So, yeah, I, I'm curious to know at, at what point is going to be like a workshop and at what point is going to be par participative? You know, uh -huh. so how do we have sort of a workshop aspect and then the other, how do we participate in? Yeah, I didn't realize it was a workshop. W workshop intending like there is li like someone teaching other people. Uh, um, I thought it was more like a wor working together, but maybe I was mistaken. Uh, it is working together. It is. Um, yeah, it's, it's like what the working together in workshops. So the, the basic framework is, is we're going to read the chapters and then get together and do the empathy circle, you know, empathic dialogue about it. So that's like the, the course itself would be, you know, that would be kind of like the core basis of it. And then with our team, we're also looking at how do we add, you know, how do we add components or activities to that basic and design uh, basic activities. So our, our group is both kind of doing, going through this, as well as like a secondary sort of looking at how we might design and, and uh, transfer this material to the uh, internet. Uh, so it's, it's a bit of a prototype and, you know, it's kind of like we did the, the uh, course, the, uh, the book, you know, and doing the empathy, empathic listening on the different topics kind of gives us an overall framework that we can kind of jump off of and then kind of build on. So does that seem, does that make sense or, or is that uh, make sense? Yeah, I, I guess so. I, I mean, I'm a little uncertain, but mm -hmm. I'll, okay. I'll wait. Okay, so I'm hearing you're a little uncertain what we're doing, but you're gonna just wait and see how it unfolds. That's sure. kind of what I'm getting. Okay, yeah. thank you. Thank you. Okay, is there any other? Okay. I'm joining, I'm joining Vincent uh, on that. I'm also a bit confused as like, 
sounds it's a mix on while we are going to share our opinion, we're going to be heard empathically and, and having empathic responses. Um, I'll, I'll wait as well and see how it's unfold and uh, I might ask more instructions later on. Okay, so just like uh, Vicente, you're kind of like wondering what are we doing and how's it going to unfold? There's a little bit of, you know, unclarity about it and just wondering how are we going to really approach this? Yes. Okay. So it would be good if, as you're going along, to actually write out these kind of uh, issues because we want to incorporate and address them, you know, in, in future uh, projects because this is really good because we're trying to make it easy for people to understand and follow and maybe create some videos as an introduction that's really clear. So if you're feeling like uncomfortable, we really want to be able to hear or lack of clarity, we really want to hear and you know, articulate that so we can you know, address that and design uh, for that. Um, is there any others before we go into the website? Okay, then I'll jump into the, we have this, uh, this is a, a Google uh, website and uh, Google site. So it's it's very easy to work with and this is our uh, one of our workspaces. So if you go to the the site, there's a, a URL here j.mp slash empathy training. That's the uh, short URL for our site and I've given everyone permission to edit and we'll have to and it's sometimes a little difficult to uh, be able to you know uh, have permissions and be able to log on and so forth and we'll deal with that later uh, kind of the technical part to make sure that everyone can go in and edit and I'll show I don't want to go into that too much now uh, and we'll because we'll do that maybe at the next meeting you know just make sure that everyone can get in there and edit add pages and so this is our main page and from here you should be able to access all the resources uh, for the project there's an introduction here for our, um, you know, to invite others to form teams. Because we have two teams now, and there's just a couple of people wanting to form another team. So once we get six together, we'll form like another team, and and you know, just keep creating uh, teams for this. There's some steps on how you can take part. You know, how to review the site. We have an event page on Facebook and. Uh, I think there's something like 60, 70 people are saying that they're interested in in this. They haven't all like you know registered or anything. There's a scheduling page to show what uh, what um, dates uh, you have available. So it's a way of forming the groups, and then some uh, general links and an interview I did with uh, Bill Miller. There's a section here on the chapters. So every a uh, chapter in the book has its own web page with just some very basic uh, information on it. You know, I don't want to, you know, kind of break the copyright for, you know, just I can't like copy the whole book here, but it has some basic, uh, you know, information about each chapter. So there's a separate page and we can kind of develop that. Uh, everyone has their own web page, so I created a web page for everyone, so you can use this for your own note keeping. Uh, you know, you'll be able to edit it. Uh, there's um, a page, a section here for, let me make this a little bigger, on sessions, and this is, uh, Bill Miller was holding a, a he did a three session empathy training for an adult school. So he uh, sent the, uh, his kind of course outline and just shared it. He said that we can use this. So the, the goal of this course was uh, to learn empathic listening and then to address the social divisions because one problem he's seeing you know, with the polarization in the United States and you know, in many countries, that it's really empathic listening that can help uh, address that. So he has a curriculum for that and he said we're welcome to, to use that. Uh, there's a page here just short uh, things to sort 
And so if you could just have something, you can create a page here, you know, notes and kind of other things, uh, you know, to-do list, uh, wanting to get the partners, you know, organizations that might partner with us. So uh, there'll be that as a resource. There's the uh, team one we have, you know, that's in each meeting has its own web page. And then we're team two. So if you kind of bookmark this, you can always have the latest on, you know, the, how to contact the team members, um, the chapters we're going to be reading, as well as, uh, you know, any other inf information about the meeting. This is a, a folder for tests. So if you're just learning how to, to uh, use the, the website, you can go in there and edit here. You can create a page, you know, sub pages, which I'll show. When you have, when you're logged in with permissions to use uh, the site, you'll see these uh, buttons here, this edit page and the create page. So you can, you know, click this edit page and it makes the page accessible and you can go in and actually edit. So it's, that's pretty, you know, just kind of add something here. You can save and then you can create a new page just by clicking this button here and it'll create a new page and you can edit that and save. You can save it in a subfolder as a subfolder. And then, so we'll go into that at a later time. So I don't want to take too much time for all this right now in our first meeting. We have the uh, toolkit. So each element for the workshop or, the, you know, designing the workshop can have its own web page and we can develop it as a tool. So we started off with a rival question. So if you go to this page, it creates a, uh, sort of an outline of the on arrival question. You know, it's like the goals of it, how long it takes, uh, kind of an outline. So it's kind of creating a, you know, kind of a modular activity. Um, and the on arrival question is that when you, we arrive in the meeting that we have one question that we're working on, you know, while everybody arrives. And every, we can all create, you can all create your own activity and add it to the toolkit. And, you know, we can, for example, intention setting or after the meeting, we can have a meeting survey. Uh, and so a couple of people have made some activities here and, uh, you know, we can keep adding and refining those activities. So that's a bit of an overview of the website and, you know, it'll keep uh, developing and, I don't know if, it, so does anyone have any questions or comments about the website? Well, it's, it's amazing. Amazing in, in what sense? Well, it's, it has, I don't know, it's, I, I like the way it's structured and okay. how many, so many resources and I don't know, it's, and it's clear, clean, I don't know, it's good. I, okay. I like it. Great. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. I, I agree. I was really impressed um, with the structure and uh, how much thought you put into how you're going to harvest yeah. from the meetings because often when people get together, they generate a lot, but actually the capturing of it and the distilling of it and the... Yeah. Looks like uh, the connection, but I was hearing uh, that, that the site appreciating the the way that we uh, harvest because we we create a lot of information. How do we capture that and organize it? And this gives us a framework for for uh, for organizing that material. So uh, hopefully we'll be able to get you back, uh, Pauline. So anything else before we move on? Okay, then let me stop the sharing. Okay, so let's see. So the next thing we have on our list is a how-to empathic listening. Did everybody get a chance to see that uh, instructions? Um, Oh, you Are you talking about the circle, Edwin? Uh, yeah. 
Yeah. Okay. Uh, Pauline, did you want to finish? You, I don't know, yeah, you were, the last thing we heard was you were saying that this ha there's a way of harvesting. You're seeing how we can harvest. I just yeah. want to be sure. Yeah, I, apologies. I live, I live in the countryside and my uh, broadband connection is a little bit intermittent. So I was talking about how often the uh, harvest isn't really planned for and it can be a deluge and very difficult to sort and organize if you haven't thought that through from the beginning. So yeah, it was, uh, I really like that. I really like the structure and uh, the way it's organized. Okay, thanks for sharing that. Let me see. Can I bring up page here? So the, the next thing we have is how to empathic listening. And I'm going to we want to create a, a video of how to do this. We have a, a flyer right now and a, a web page, and it's one of the tasks is to you know create a a um, maybe first creating a, a slideshow and then having four of us actually model it and introduce it. So that's a, one of the projects we want to do. But in the meantime, let me just review the, the flyer we have for how to empathic listening. And it's, uh, well, no, it's the wrong page. Let me get the right one, how to screen share. Okay, so this is our basic flyer for how to do empathic listening. And uh, the whole book, Listening Well, is kind of geared towards, you know, learning to or practicing empathic listening. And what we want to, we're going to be doing, uh, we're going to be talking about the uh, book, the first three, two chapters, and we'll begin, this is the process we're going to use. So in a circle of three to four, it's like one person is going to be the speaker and they're gonna select who they're gonna to speak to and they're gonna have uh, five minutes to share whatever comes up for them about the, uh, uh, whatever, about the chapters that we're looking at. And then the uh, listener is going to reflect back their understanding of what they're hearing the speaker say so, till the fe speaker feels heard to their, under to their satisfaction. And then it's going to be this uh, the listener, once the speaker feels fully heard, they can say something like, I feel fully heard. And then it will be the listener's turn to become the speaker or the five minutes, you know, kind of time limit is up. So uh, that's how the transition happens to from the speaker speaking to, um, let me move this a little bit, maybe a little. So, and, uh, so everyone holds the circle process by monitoring sticking to the uh, steps. The dialogue continues around the circle uh, for the time allotted. And uh, we're gonna probably have about 50 minutes for this first time. In future meetings, we're gonna have a lot more time for this component as we have a lot of setup to do here. So some tips for the speaker, pause often to give the listener a chance to reflect what they heard. Uh, when you're done talking and you feel heard, you can say, I fully, I, I'm fully heard, and that just says, I'm done, and it's the uh, listener's turn to begin speaking, and then the listener selects who they're going to speak to, and we continue like that. So for the uh, listener, in your own words, you know, you're just reflecting back the essence of what you hear the speaker saying. And you know, you're not wanting to ask questions or judge or analyze, detach all the kind of the blocks to empathy. Uh, when it's your turn to speak, you can say anything you want. You can judge, you can, <laughs> you know, you're free to totally be free to say whatever you want. There's, you know, it's not a safe space. You can be, you know, nasty if you want. And the person who's speaking to you will reflect back whatever you're saying to your satisfaction. Uh, you may uh, ask the speaker to pause periodically. So sometimes the speaker is speaking for a while and then it's like too much to remember you, or they're kind of shifting topics and you can just, you know, kind of break in and say, oh, let me just reflect back what I'm hearing so far. And uh, so that's another aspect as a listener. And then uh, listen and be present to exchange. So as a silent listener, the people who aren't speaking are just listening and being uh, present. 
and eventually, you know, everyone will get a turn. And uh, so that's kind of like the basics of the listening. It's, you know, fairly easy process to um, get started with. But I think one of the most effective, you know, first steps for em empathy. And uh, the best way, too, is we just start doing it. And um, then we kind of just learn by doing and kind of looking forward to getting our video online so we can have a really good explanation and, and modeling of it. So that's one of the next projects we're up to. So with that, we're ready to go into our empathic listening. But first, we're going to just review the uh, chapters. We have the, our assignment was to read the preface, book preface, chapter one and chapter two. And I made a little slideshow to show that. So this is the book, Listening Well which is what we're reading. We're looking at uh, our meeting one, we're looking at the preface, chapter one and chapter two. Uh, the preface, just a quick summary, you know, he asks, uh, are you a good listener? He says there's many problems in the world. And then he makes the case that we are hardwired for empathy, you know, basically through mirror neurons. Then in chapter one is titled Together, and he starts uh, the chapter with, um, you know, this quote by Harper Lee, uh, you never really understand another person until you climb, until you consider things from their point of view, until you climb inside their skin and walk around in it. So he starts that. And the essence, he's basically saying, we can take the perspective of others. So he's just kind of making that as a statement. Chapter two, you know, he's got a quote from Carl Rogers about empathy being the most delicate and powerful way of uh, using, which is misspelt ourselves. In spite of all that has been said and written on this topic, it is a way of being that is rarely seen and full blown in a, a relationship. So that is, uh, he starts that chapter, accurate empathy is this chapter. And then he says, empathy is feeling in. What empathy is not, it's not sympathy, which is feeling for someone. Apathy, which is the absence of feeling. And objectivity, which is sort of a distancing of feelings. And identifying is uh, similar feelings. He goes on to say that it's a, empathy is a learnable and useful skill. He says the benefits of empathy or empath empathic listening is it clarifies communications. It strengthens all relationships, parenting, education, friendship, and business. So that is just a quick review of, of the uh, chapters. And so we've got about uh, 50 minutes for doing empathic listening. And uh, someone can begin and select who you're going to speak to. And we're just talking about, you know, whatever comes up for you, you're talking about the chapters, you know, what you read, or you can always speak about what is alive for you. So you don't, you know, just if there's something burning that you want to share, you can share that or um, talk about, you know, kind of insights from, from the book. So is there someone who would like to start and select? I've been doing a lot of talking, so I don't want to, <laughs> and I won't be doing all this much talking, you know, all the time, it's just to get the ball rolling here. Uh, so if so, someone would like to start and select who you'd like to speak to, and I'll keep time for five minutes each, kind of max. Okay, I can start. I, I'd like to talk to Bunny. Hi, Pauline. That looks like uh, maybe her connection dropped in. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, Pauline, you could, uh, if you turn off your video, uh, you might have more bandwidth. Um, and these are kind of breaking up. Uh, yes. It's like the, yeah, there you go. Okay, can you hear me? Yes. Hi, Bunny. So um, I you resonated with what you said about losing your son. Um, I lost my son too. 
Um, and I'm very interested in the grief process, um, how it opens you to uh, a greater level of empathy and connection um, and the places that it takes you to emotionally. Um, and while I would do anything to have my son come back, I, yeah, I feel thankful that I have touched uh, something that other people um, have touched and that I can connect uh, with. Pauline, first of all, I am so sorry for your loss. Um, it sounds to me as if even though you have lost a treasure in your life uh, that you are saying is you lost your son as well, that you are experiencing some gratitude that you have been able to um, possibly feel the, um, be empathetic towards others who have suffered the same type of grief. Hi, um, I don't know what you heard because my uh, connection cut out. So, um, did you hear much? It felt like it cut out quite quickly. Yeah, she she was reflecting back what you were saying. So, okay, should I continue? Mm -hmm. Sure. I moved to another room, so hopefully this will be a bit better. Um, yeah, so I mean, Bunny, I was just saying that I resonated with the story and um, I'm really interested in grief and where it takes you and the capacity that it opens for empathy. Um, some of the most empathic people that I have met recently have been people who have experienced deep grief, trauma, uh, displacement. and it, it, So the human spirit and, and where uh, we go emotionally in these extremely painful life situations. I think that to me it's inextricably connected um, to my understanding of empathy. There's also something for me along with that, which is around um, intuition. So how we sense each other. And I think sometimes the sensations when we're connecting with people can be so powerful that we shut them down because we're deadening and we're numbing. So for me, there's something in empathy work that's about opening and allowing and sitting with discomfort, perhaps. And having not read the book because it hasn't arrived yet, um, I thought it's maybe more useful for me to share, I guess, some of the resonances that I'm picking up um, really, I guess, uh, triggered from your story, Bunny. So. Yeah, I think that's right about the time. Thank you so much, Pauline. I'm not sure if you heard um, my reflection back to you, but I um, was no. there anything that you heard that I reflected back to you? No, I didn't hear anything. My connection. Okay. okay, may I proceed then with reflecting again, um, Edwin? Edwin? Yeah, he's giving you the thumbs yeah, up. Go ahead, just however okay. you feel. Okay, I'll, I'll go back to uh, what I had first um, said was, first of all, I want to um, tell you how terribly sorry I offer you my, my condolences um, for losing your son. It's um, something that happens to a lot of people, uh, sadly. Um, but what I'm hearing is that your experience is that you have been able to open uh, to others who have shared in empathy with you and your grief, um, yeah. that you're grateful for them, and that you have touched on something that it's very interesting to me is the notion of resonating um, with those people and the intuition that you are sensing 
with those others. It's um, a lovely thought, and I thank you for sharing. Mm, thank you. Yes, thank you. I feel very heard by you. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Was there more? Did you feel fully heard? Yeah, I did. And I, I felt a connection. I felt there was a real empathic uh, connection flowing between us. Uh, okay. Which is interesting, again, in terms of online. You know, <laughs> and it's, a, it's something that I've encountered with uh, people I'm close to in other places. Um, but not with a stranger so that's interesting and that that in a, such a short time well, pauline i would suggest to you are not strangers anymore <laughs> that's right uh, yeah. funny would you be would you reflect back that last part that uh, pauline just said certainly is that um i think what i'm hearing you say pauline is that there's a bit of um uh, surprise is the word, maybe not the correct word, but it's a surprise to you that even though you have experienced um, online interactions, is that um, my being someone that you don't know, that there is a surprise for you, a little bit of, of um, the notion that, that this is unusual, that there is a connection of empathy between people who haven't known each other before online. Yeah. Yeah, it's fascinating. Yeah, and it's lovely. Yeah. Thank you. For me, too. <laughs> so, uh, Bunny, you can select who you'd like to speak to, and we'll continue. Thank you. Um, I think I'd like to... Um, uh, speak to Jessica. Uh, Jessica, what what came up for me in Edwin's overview of of the the sense of the paragraphs and the the chapters and one of the the highlighted portions was the issue of education and I'm not sure that I chose you because I feel that you're of an age that you may have children. But I'm wondering, um, I'm going to say that, that I believe that, that there is a real opportunity for parents to learn the act of listening um, when they are parenting their children. Um, and I think that's a, um, a big step for um, maybe the, the parenting community as far as education is concerned, because how often do we really listen to children? Um, it's, to me, it's critical to be able to do so. And I am wondering why I'm sharing that with you. <laughs> Yeah, it sounds like you kind of surprised that you picked me. You're not sure really fully why, and you still went with it. And you, there's the theme of education and parenting. And uh, to answer your question, no, I don't have kids. Um, <laughs> um, but I do work um, with parents. And you are seeing the huge opportunity. I think you mentioned the word opportunity. Like, um, I'm hearing a bit of your hope that there's a huge potential in the education and parenting and the relation between parents and, and children. Um, yes, and thank yeah. you. I feel fully heard. <laughs> thank you for sharing. <laughs> My pleasure. Um, I'm gonna speak to Vincent. I, um, I, I want, I, I'm going to talk about a bit more of the book, if that's okay. Yeah. <laughs> Whatever I want. <laughs> <laughs> um, there was, I, I reread a bit, um, the first few chapters 
Um, and there was uh, one thing that made me frown because I wasn't sure if I fully understand well, understood well, or needed some clarity around um, in page number three. Uh, it's talking about in the chapter one, it says, um, some ability to read others' experience and intention is a vital component of social skills and even of survival as an individual and species. And what I often do is like, when I'm reading something, I'm not fully sure I imagine that someone is asking me to clarify and I was not able in my head to explain the person why empathic listening is a survival. It's important to our survival. So <laughs> I was kind of like pondering on that last night. Um, and, and I think I'm going to stop here because it's, otherwise I'm going to go for half an hour on something else. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I hear, I hear that, that you, you read the chapters and in, I, I believe in page three, you found, um, uh, uh something that you you need a clarification about because uh you 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 couldn't see why uh, this empathy and being able to read all other people's minds is like a, a survival a skill or ability yeah like there's, there was like this part of me was like yeah absolutely and the ra really rational practical part of me is like how would i explain that i i don't know how can I either scientifically or, or is it just a, um, you, you know how sometimes when some we, we agree in something, but we are not explained why we agree. And I'd like to be able to explain as a, as a facilitator, I also want to be able to, to explain things. And it, I'm like, yeah, it, it is. Empathy is so crucial. It's very the key. And I, and I'm totally on board. And then sometimes I'm like, but why survival? Like there's yes, and there's a confusion about how to explain it. Yeah, yeah, because you you really not need uh, want to back to back your your whatever you uh, your uh, affirmation what you say. You 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 need a back for this. Well, a back. I don't know if that's the right expression, but you need to really be be able to explain and to answer the question. If someone asks you, why are you saying that? Are you sure? Is this yes. so scientific and you want to have like a very nice response? Yes, I, I like, I'm, like when you said before, I think like I'm a learner as well and, and I love asking tons of questions. So I expect people to ask me tons of questions. And like you say, yeah, that I'd like to be able to make, to make it sense, to be able to transform in words what, I'm, what I'm, my body is saying. Yes, it's, it's, it is a survival thing. But I haven't found the word and the explanation. So yes, and I, I feel her like Vincent. I think you got what I was saying. Okay, good. Thank you. You're welcome. So, are you ready, Rita? <laughs> oh, or should I go I for Edwin? I, I'm not. No, 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 Rita. Uh, so Rita, so, sorry, so, sorry, sorry, sorry. So let's see. Yeah, I read the chapters uh two or three times because they are they are short and each time it's like i'm reading them like for the first time because i i, I i'm struggling to find a lot of substance you know i hear that uh yeah that com that we we don't we're not born like being able to listen well although everybody believes they are great listeners <laughs> I, I think that's I think that's nice. So, uh, some a nice thing to say, and that's like the preface, I, I believe. And then uh, he talks about the importance of really uh, like being in some other people's skin or really understanding their point of view, their perspective. That's not a chapter. And then he says, you know, and you shouldn't sympathize too much with someone or pity someone or you shouldn't identify with that person this is not a very nice way to listen and there goes chapter two so i don't know i uh, i feel a little like i'm i'm missing something 
Hmm. Something else, some, uh, uh, I'm missing some depth. So, Vincent, um, I think what you're saying is that you're reading, you, you were reading the chapters and rereading the chapters and each time hoping to maybe find something more because somehow you find it a bit superficial um, it doesn't bring you anything earth shattering maybe um, so and at the same time you you kind of said each time i was reading it you were trying to read it as if it was the the the, the first time um, and then you're wondering yeah um, the book is or he's saying in the book that we are we are not born with listening well and we believe we are listening well and <laughs> and it's like okay so what's next what's more give me more give me more you seem hungry um for something deeper maybe and um and more stimulating and and um uh, something that engages you. It seems like, okay, I'm bored a bit. Yeah, well, maybe, yeah, maybe, I'm maybe bored. bored uh, it's a little, oh, oh, oh well, yeah, uh, not that much, but maybe the, this, uh, yeah, identify with this hunger, like, like, I really want something happening, something happening. So, so, so we can really produce something significant and and useful. And if I say this. To, uh, to an audience or, I mean, they're going to say, okay, now what? What's new? I already know that. And I'm a great listener anyways. So, <laughs> so okay. So, so uh, I'm yeah. uh, a little uneasy with this because yeah. uh, I really want to get to somewhere. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. You, your intention is really to to bring out the, 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 the concepts that we learn, learn that we're going to learn or, or engage in uh, in um, um, empathic listening, and and you want to make sure when you go in front of a, of an audience that um, you're bringing something that will stimulate. Uh, maybe the, the the people you you talk about and and at the same time uh, your intention is to make a difference and and you are still engaging because uh, you you still um, you you still believe something will come out of it is thank that you. it? i feel fully hurt <laughs> yeah sure thank you thank you <laughs> Thank you for sharing. So, Edwin, you up for it? Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> As I was reading the book, it was it was those chapters are, are so are so tiny. They were a couple of elements that that I just wrote down. Um, one is because I have this difficulty when when someone says what is empathy um, to explain it because empathy compassion i've heard and read so many um, so many definitions that i thought i really like how we he's put it together it he was saying it's a way of um, understanding the the feelings or connecting with the feelings of someone and then the same time connecting with the meaning of that feeling. So for me, that was, that seemed to be something I can keep in my mind to explain what is empathy. So I really liked that. You want me to stop or you want yeah, me to continue? Yeah, let me reflect. So <laughs> what really resonated with you, uh, I mean, these are short chapters and and the part that resonated with you is when he talked about that empathy is the the feelings that were and the connecting with the feelings and you've there's been a lot of uh, you know you've seen you've been doing this for quite a while looking at this and 
there's all these different definitions of empathy and compassion, but the thing that really resonates with you is the aspect of feeling. Um, yeah, feeling and, 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 and the meaning. Uh, oh, and meaning, yeah. Beyond feeling, it's also the deeper meaning of, uh, is what resonates with you. Yeah, and uh, yeah, I suppose it's a, it's a simple way to explain that to people. I, I also, I, I know that, and it was a nice reminder for me that um, you don't have to, to, to have uh, um, a lot of education to be able to, to um, embody empathy. And, and I, I love that it's accessible to any human being that that's reassuring um and when he talked about um, um us reading the book it's it's about being aware empathy starts with the awareness of different perspectives i think he said something like that and to me it reminds me of a quote from dominic barter who um, is the father of the restorative circles. Um, what he says is that a point of view is only a view for, from a point. So it was bringing me, it was making that bridge with, with that, that saying from Dominique that I quote all the time, um, <coughs> because it's, uh, it's something very, <laughs> Again, it's an easy way to explain different perspectives to people. Uh, so uh, what, one of the pieces that uh, resonate with you is this aspect of points of view and different perspectives. And uh, Bill Miller is talking about perspectives. And uh, you also, it kind of lined up with uh, something you've heard from Dominic Barter about the different points of view that, uh, I can't remember the exact quote, but that everything is just from its own point of view and having sort of that awareness. Yeah, I, I, yes, Th thank you, Edwin. Just the, the, the quote is really about a point of view, which is the, the expression we always, we, we use and, and our, um, um, we are, automatically um, it's an automatic way of saying is is a view from a point so oh, mm -hmm. from wh whatever point we have we are we have a different view on on the matter uh -huh. so a point of view is just a view from some point on some topic and exactly. so that's what a point of view is <laughs> <laughs> Here we're going in second. Perfect. I totally feel hurt. Thank you. Okay. Is there more? Or you felt you felt hurt? You're saying okay. Then uh, I guess I'll speak to Vicence. Um. Yeah. So I mean, this this I, I find it so interesting. This topic of really wanting something that has meaning for you. <laughs> I so, I'm sort of enjoying that that. You know that struggle for some from something that has some weight or some meaning. Uh, so I'm, I'm sort of enjoying that uh, that drive of yours. So if you just want to reflect that back, and you're muted. Yeah. So so you, you you're enjoying the fact that uh, I'm really trying to get something. And, and and this meaning and you're really enjoying and liking that yeah because i have the same you know i also want something that's sort of uh sort of deep sort of profound something that really kind of resonates so that's something you know that i would really like as well uh for me it's like the book is like a nice jumping off point so at least it's the starting point right it's like you got to start somewhere and from here we can jump off so I, what I kind of like is just having that structure. Like here's this structure, 16 chapters. It gives us an overall framework and we can kind of jump off uh, from there. So I appreciate the, the, that structure. So, so you, you also like very much depth 
uh, and and at the same time uh, appreciate the structure of this book because it's a very nice starting point. Uh, you said another word, but I, I uh, starting point. Uh, so it it may be very useful. Yeah. Oh, and it's it's um, it, there's also this a start it's sort of this structure he does have a lot of experience uh, you know he's been trained doing this motivational interviewing so kind of taking it to the next step to listening for motivation so that's kind of interesting um, the the point I think for me maybe I think it ties in with what Rita is saying about feeling right that it's like when we really feel something, right? It's like the book is a little, you know, maybe intellectual, you know, and it, it's when you really feel something deeply, right? It really touches your felt experience that that's kind of where the meaning is. And, and how do we, you know, connect into the feeling aspect of, you know, it, it's, I think that's maybe, you know, for me at least, that's where, Something that we can, how I see empathy is it's about feeling. It's about the nature of feeling. How do we share our feelings? How do we articulate, convey, you know, feel into these uh, deeper feelings and kind of move beyond uh, maybe an intellectual or, you know. So on the one hand, you, you, you admire Miller because he's the creator of, of motivational interviewing. So he's someone who knows a lot about communication. And 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 also you you like that the, the book stresses the importance of feelings and that communication is a lot about getting feelings, understanding feelings, not so much about something intellectual, just words, um, feelings. Yeah, I don't think the book focuses on feelings. It's like that's what I think I would like to focus on is like the felt experience. I, I'm thinking maybe because it's more intellectual that's maybe what's missing is that sense of, you know, felt experience for, I, I'm just kind of guessing that at least that's what it is for me, right? It's like, how do we get into the deeper, you know, the felt experience? And that's where the, the, the meat or the juice or the energy is. Yeah. So may, maybe the book is not that much about feelings and that's where you want to get because you feel that w that's where the juice and the, the important thing is. Yeah. So, yeah. and how do we convey that? You know, I, I think in terms of there's a, an empathy test where you read the feelings in people's eyes, right? Or we share our own feelings or, you know, we had a lot of that. I mean, we've had some, you know, sh you know grief shared here and, you know, loss and, you know, it's kind of these deeper uh, feelings. So it's like, how do we tap into feel into those and share and you know create a, a space where we can kind of go into that yeah you definitely want this to be in i mean this feelings a thing wants to you you definitely feel a need i mean wants this to be part of this course or something because this is like the main thing really yeah being able to capture and to be in contact with uh, our feelings and other people's feelings but I do, and I do appreciate the structure of the podcast <laughs> because it's also like, how do we have a structure, you know, kind of a systematic structure as well as the felt experience? That's maybe part of the task is how do we combine those two? Um, so, so felt experience and the structure mm -hmm. both. Yeah. So I feel so, heard. But, Thank you. Yeah, that's great. I appreciate that. Thank you. So we just continue for another round. So may I? Um, we're, it's, it's now uh, Vicente's turn to continue to speak. And with, uh, one thing we do sometimes with, in terms of your desire, like now he's, he's selecting who to speak to. You can go on a scale of you know, one to five, like how intensely you want to speak. Okay. Um, and like if you're really wanting to, and then you can have like three or whatever. And then it's still up to Vicente to choose who he wants. But we can say our prep, how much we want to speak. So. Huh. Huh. I wasn't expecting that. <laughs> uh, yeah. Yeah. I don't know if, if I had that much more to share about the book. But you can just select who you're speaking to first. Right. Uh, but I would rather know first what I'm going to talk about. 
Uh, uh, let me see. Well, I'll talk to Pauline. And, uh, you know, uh, I, I'm very interested also in ULAB. So I was interested when you mentioned that. And uh, for some reason, I, I, uh, I'm also having some, maybe I haven't followed ULAB. I mean, I haven't uh, finished the course. That's bad. Uh, but, and, and I know that there is something there that uh, about uh, dialogue and, and about uh, listening and about co-creating, which is very, uh, which is very interesting. But for some reason, I, I have like a lot of difficulty, uh, like getting getting that and being able to to learn in that and to implement it. I'm not sure why I'm saying that, but. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I'm, I'm hearing you saying that you've been very interested in ULAB, um, but something not working for you, you know that it's connected into listening and dialogue and co-creation, but um, maybe it's, you know, how much you've engaged with the core, maybe something else, but something not quite gelling for you about ULAB. Mm -hmm. You're interested in it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so and maybe this connects with my need for for structure, for having a very clear path, uh, mm. really, really knowing what are the components of everything. So, so it's not like uh, mm. like a cloud, you know what I mean, like a fuzzy cloud, which I don't find fun. Okay. <laughs> I'm hearing that you don't like uh, fuzzy clouds, cloud of unclarity, or that <laughs> you don't like to feel things are maybe like a bit woolly or vague, that you prefer a clear path, uh, structure, um, to know where you are and to know where you're going and how yeah. you're going to get there. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You, you feel me? Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah <laughs> and <laughs> hmm. so what wow. yeah 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 I, I think that we have a lot of knowledge nowadays so it's really possible to to make things structured not rigid at all just giving mm -hmm. possibilities in a clear language mm -hmm. so I, I just feel this is this, this is possible and mm -hmm. and i wish we we had everything like put in in a very clear way mm, mm. sorry uh, so i'm hearing some frustration there about um perhaps um, that things could be more structured, they could be clear that we have the knowledge to do that and, and it's not happening everywhere. Yeah, I, I feel hurt. I haven't solved it, but I feel hurt. Thank you. <laughs> um, thank you. I'm glad. <laughs> um, do I go continue on? Yeah. Yeah, we just keep going. Just keep going for another about 15 minutes or so. Okay, um, yeah, um, I guess Edwin, I'd like to talk to you because coming up for me right now is about the challenge of creating this course, the references and the resonances, picking up a little bit on what um, Vicence was talking about there. So what I am thinking about is when things are straightforward but complicated, you can apply learning from before, you know, so if you think about things like the Sinophon framework or something like that, um, it helps you to know the difference between when you're working with something that's just complicated or when you're working with complexity. And when you're working in complexity, there isn't a clear path because it's new, it's emerging. And so the messiness about that which can be really frustrating and it can feel like you're going nowhere and like Vincent says you're in the cloud and it's like oh why can't we just find 
clear language or the clear path or so for me the really interesting part of this work in terms of creating something is about how can you start to empathy circle is a really good way of doing that um how can you know that you're in complexity and what strategy and kind of uh, activities work well um, because empathy is not straightforward you know um, there's something coming up for me around the definition about the experience about how the language right? and it feels like some of that might form a focus for us before we can really almost get somewhere you know it's almost establishing the ground or establishing the container stuff about trust sorry that's a hell of a lot of stuff that i've just said it's mm -hmm. just all spilling out <laughs> uh, yeah so there's a, a lot just spilling out you're kind of uh, building on what we sense is saying this is spilling out about about dealing with uh complexity and you know how do you there's a maybe some pieces that need to be in place to build the can't container to move forward uh, with addressing this complexity and you're kind of looking at well how yeah. maybe there's like definitions or things like that that need to be addressed for yeah yeah um exactly um all of that and um i guess how do you co-create in that complexity so what are the kind of tools um that we can use um, i'm thinking that we don't need to reinvent the wheel that there's stuff that draw together and reference respectfully and use productively. It'd be interesting to start to amass those things um, and maybe not be in too much of a hurry to pin it down um, in terms of content and order, but to really know that we've got everything in the container that we think is important. Um, so almost a divergent phase uh -huh. for this work which feels messy, Ugh. but actually it's necessary to get to the distilling, filtering, decision-making around, you know, how it, how it is sequenced. Okay, so there's, a, I think, two things I was hearing. One is uh, we're in sort of a divergent phase uh, where it seems a little bit messy. We're going and just kind of exploring. It just feels a little bit messy when you're kind of in this divergent uh, yeah. aspect. But you know, be aware of that and kind of hold hold that. And but there was another part in terms. It sounded like about researching, not reinventing the wheel, but gathering what's already been out there. And maybe there's a phase of of gathering uh, yeah. that material. Yeah, yeah definitely. Yeah, I feel very heard, and I would be happy to contribute to that gathering. Hmm, okay. Um, is there more, or are you completely heard? No, I feel completely heard. I'm okay, sorry. fully heard. Then, um, well, let's see, I speak to uh, Rita. Go ahead, Edwin. Okay, so uh, the container that, uh, you know, the, and the container that I see is uh, sort of the empathy circle. It's like, it's kind of like the simplest, most effective container that I know of for doing empathic, I mean, for kind of, uh, yeah, for practicing, developing empathy. So that is kind of like the core of what we're doing. You know, in, in, in every meeting, we're gonna be having this empathy circle. And that's for whatever wants to emerge can emerge and we're listening and hearing that. So we're sort of like being empath, you know, practicing our em empathy building skills too. Hmm. Well, um, Edwin, so really for you, the empathy circles are the ideal container um, to explore empathy, to practice empathy and um, and to be with empathy as well as developing within those empathy circle and conversation any ideas that we want to develop and wherever it, it, it's going to go. Um, so, so really the empathy circle is 
the start, the contain, yeah. and 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 the uh, the road somehow. Because yeah. it's this with this basic, you know, I've been I've done these circles within my family. Like my family is conservative, and you know, we've had conflict in the family, and you know, I. And I kind of brought in empathic listening. And so now with my extended family, we sit and have these empathy circles, you know, and talk about family issues. And it's really uh, helped to, you know, address issues to the point now where, uh, you know, some family members, they, they, they have a conflict and they, they, they want to have an empathy circle. I said, oh, do you want me to help? They said, no, we can do it by ourselves. <laughs> so it's like, so that is like a core, you know, that I've just seen the effectiveness. I mean, that's kind of going into mediation, you know, kind of aspects. We've done it in the empathy tent where we, you know, practice. We just listen to people who come. So the empathy circle is a good practice for, you know, preparing for, for that. So I just see this empathy circle as like a core uh, practice. Um, and, yeah, so I just... So really, the the as you say, the empathy circle, Edwin, is 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 the core of of what you of what you're doing, and and in fact, you have brought it in your real life and personal life with your family, who um, you state them as conservative, and and um, and you've um, experienced conflict within family members with empathic circles those conflict not only resolve you've been able to help people um hear each other and 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 they've been inspired to bring it with with it within themselves because it, it has worked it has made a difference and and now they even say ah you don't even need to come. <laughs> <laughs> that circle we're good on our own yeah so success <laughs> success that's the ultimate success isn't it um yeah and then and then the the empathy tent is is the place where um where you make it happen out there in the political world and 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 you see you see the power um of the reflective uh, empathic listening it seems it seems to be um that you see the application being endless mm -hmm. or maybe i'm adding to, to what you yeah said. and we can keep adding to it uh, you know we can gather i think pauline's mentioning gathering material you know it's already available uh one of the activities i wanted to talk about was creating separate activities that are meaningful that you find meaningful and we add it to the website as an activity. You know, we create a whole list of activities that we can pull out and form, you know, different learning, you know. So if there's a, something that's very meaningful that you experience, you can turn it into, into, a, uh, into an activity and put it on the website and then we'll practice it, you know, bring it in to the, into our meetings, so. So, so you are inviting us to if you have any activities that that uh, can help um, promote the the experience of of empathic listening you you want to be able to put it on 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 the website so we can try it other people can try it and um um yeah I, you know you, you you sound and you seem so passionate when you talk about about um, empathic circles it, it comes across how, how you uh, how you so believe in, in, in the effectiveness. Yep, I feel fully heard. Thank you. Mm -hmm. <sighs> uh, I don't know where to go. Ah, first choose someone. Um, Bunny? Oh, you've already... No, you, you haven't... Yes, spoken. Rita. <laughs> <laughs> Whew. Um, yes, it, it, I, I am right now really, really um, enjoying the, the conversation. I, I am sensing that I, I am at this place where I want to be and, and engage in, in, in the 
um, in, in the empathic listening production, if one may say, to how to bring it out to, to the world um, without trying to sell it. And I'm inspiring, I'm inspired by um, having heard that you can just do it and then that inspires. Mm. Um, so you don't need to convince, it's the convincing, the selling that I'm really not comfortable with. Mm -hmm. um, so I, I like to be able to oh, just rely on yeah i know it works by just it seems especially from what you were just saying um edwin it seems that just by uh walking the path people are touched and then um it's in itself it it, it creates the energy of empathy around and uh, that's so hopeful it's ah. reassuring i find i love that word you use that word so often when we <laughs> talk i love that word um i am hearing rita that you are very much enjoying this conversation this dialogue with the team and that um you are where you want to be right now talking about empathy because I heard earlier that you feel as if you're a little bit obsessed about empathy. <laughs> um, but you want to do so without selling it. Um, and I'd, I'd love to hear more about that. But it seems to me what I'm hearing right now is that you're inspired by the the fundamental notion of just walking the path of empathy is is really enough for you and that you are almost it's almost a here sense of relief in you that that is what it takes that it, it is not selling the notion of empathy that it is actually doing so hmm. is there anything i missed no, it's I feel fully heard. <laughs> Thank, Thank you. <laughs> so one more. Um, I am going to say that um, following up on what Rita says is that. Um, Who are you speaking to? Um, I think I'll speak to Vincenz because I'm feeling a little um, a little bit on the other side of what Vincenz is saying is that um, I feel as if I am meant to be here, yes. Um, however, I am completely um, overwhelmed by the structure. The structure to me is not congruent with my method of thinking. Uh, I feel as if it's all over the place. Um, I'm not, I'm not, um, I'm feeling uh, uh, quite frustrated, actually. And I, I know Pauline was even saying that, that she was um, happy with the structure, but um, I'm not, I'm quite not feeling happy. It's very overwhelming. So structure is, is overwhelming for you? You don't you don't feel like comfortable with with the structure. It's like there is a feeling of non congruence. There's something mm -hmm. different. You need something different, not so much structure. Uh, I'm not sure that that I would say that, Vincenz. Um, mm -hmm. I would say that, and maybe I'm not saying it properly. Is the structure of this particular um, training? that I am really struggling with because it's, uh, it's creating expectations I am completely afraid that I'm not going to be able to meet, um, such as uh, creating a training, such as um, um, doing the Google Docs, um, it, uh, such as um, 
what was the other thing that we have to do is um, making notes. Um, it seems to me it's, it's all over the place and I really don't, it's not a linear path for me. So this for me is um, maybe, um, I like structure to a certain degree, but I'm, I'm struggling with this and, and that's opposing what you're feeling from what I understand. Uh, so, so yeah, so there are like a lot of things, uh, the, like the, the, the book on one side and the site and the notes and like so many things and all over the place. And that's, I mean, l like you, you feel kind of overwhelmed, like it's not like you are up to at this point. Uh, and like uh, making a training, like, like too many things. And yeah. And you, you, you like like um, a straighter path, no, not straight, a like linear path. Sorry, uh, yeah. I understood, kind of understood. And you feel that that's like the opposite of what I want. Yes, thank you, Vincenzo. I feel heard. You're welcome. Okay, <laughs> thanks. So we're almost out of time, but I think Jessica didn't have a chance for the second round. So, uh, did you speak twice, uh, Jessica? Would you, do you want to speak? Um, so in closing, out, Sure. Take um, around, just select someone. Sure. Uh, well, actually you, Edwin. Okay. Um, so that's interesting because I'm feeling uh, frustrated as well, actually, Bunny. Um, <laughs> I, I, I was trying to think as like, it's one thing to want to offer empathic listening and I feel, um, well, you know, we were talking about feelings and, and stuff, and I was wondering how it can look, how, how it can be uh, natural and part of life. And, and in part of life is that I don't, I would rarely only want to receive empathy. I would also want to hear opinion. I wouldn't want to debate, I wouldn't want to argue, I want to talk. And, and for me today, um, I came with this uh, idea that we will talk and, and, and in this structure while, um, while um, I'm going to go back to my concrete example. When I was talking about the survival thing my the first time, I wanted to hear, I realized after like, what people thought about that. I wanted to, I wanted an answer of this why. Uh, I, and I, I'm thinking like, if we only do that, for me, it, it, I'm like, I need empathy only once maybe, and, and I might not need it even at all. And, and I love the practice though. I love, of course, like reflecting this really needed. And at the same time in this structure as, as, you want me to pause maybe because it's a lot. Mm, okay, so yeah, sure. So what I'm hearing is you're feeling some frustration uh, as well because uh, you, you would like a sort of a variety of, of uh, relating. So like ask questions, you know, to speak, to uh, maybe not necessarily just do the empathic listening. Yes, uh, in... And I was already projecting like in a course, like in the end, like we're not going to go in the streets and, and uh, just do empathy. Um, we like, I'm, I'm wondering how we can um, grow, how, how we can create something, how we can create a training if we are not having conflict or not having ideas that are going to bounce and and then mm -hmm. and if we only giving empathy i mean only if we're giving empathy and say okay i felt heard i i, I felt like i wanted to hear what vincent had to say the first time I was like okay so vincent like okay i felt heard now what do you think like i want to hear your opinion and then i will do the empathy and then maybe it will, maybe vincent didn't want to hear my opinion but it, it, it feels very robotic to me and very, uh, how are we going to create a whole online course if we are only doing it? I'm, I'm having a lack of visibility and clarity on how it's going to work out. 
Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So it's like, uh, if there's lack of clarity, like if we're just doing empathic listening, how are we going to create a course? Uh, and if like when Vicente says something, you'd like to have a response to it right away. Or when you say something, you'd like to, so you'd like more of a sort of a freestyle uh, dialogue uh, without the empathic listening. And just, you're just like wondering how can we create a course out of this, uh, you know, sort of empathic listening using this empathic listening. Yeah, because I, I yeah, because I, I think it's, um, if I imagine the course now, it's important to have the first maybe few modules really being very structured, like an empathic circle and really focusing on that. And then moving on to, okay, so now, how does it look like in real life? Like, how, how do you do that in real life? And, and the real life part, I, would, I, I see it now in our group because we are all, um, I'm not an expert and I, I appreciate the practicing, but I'm wondering if doing that maybe for 20 minutes, just one round, and then we can have a debate. But during the debate, we can include the empathy. It's, it would be more a flow rather than a circle thing. I see Pauline who wants to say something. <laughs> <laughs> well, let me reflect that back. So what I'm hearing is maybe like one round of empathic listening, and then we kind of open it up to, a, to more of a debate, more of a dialogue. And that's kind of what you would feel would be kind of more effective. I think yeah. so. And because oh, okay. I also think real life, we... Oh, and that was the other part, the real life. It's like, how does this relate to real life? Like, how does yeah. it kind of really yeah. fit within real life? Yeah, L last night I was complaining to my partner and he knows about the empathy thing and he, he started to give me a solution and I kind of looked at him like, with squinty eyes and he's like, oh, did I give you some solution and you didn't want to? And I was like, no, I just need empathy and I. So I was able to learn and he learned that to, for me to express what I exactly need. And, but sometimes I do say, oh, yeah, la, I, I want the empathy first, but then can you give me your opinion afterwards? Like, I think it would be part of a training to know, for people to know what they actually want and need as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so it's like not just have the empathic listening, but then also like solutions and have other kind of components added to, the, to it. Um, how to integrate empathy listening in re the, re the reality of life. Okay, so you have a question is, how might we integrate empathy into the realities of everyday life? <laughs> it's sort <laughs> of like a design question that we have here. How might we, so yeah. yeah. Is yeah. that? And for example, I'd love to hear what Pauline has said because I see her moving yeah. okay. And Pauline is chomping at the bit, so we want to hear what she said. <laughs> uh, just, I, just um, I'm just, I'm, I'm really, um, I'm kind of, uh, I'm laughing and I'm also kind of excited because I think this is all part of the process. Um, <laughs> empathy is the foundation. It has to be. And you can't take it as read that you know how to listen or you know how to empathize. So I think modeling this has been really important. But I think that as we grow in terms of our understanding, <laughs> it's necessarily about moving to debate because debate and dialogue are two different things. So with an empathy, you don't really need to have debate because you can have mutual understanding and you can have respectful discussion and you know, space for diversity and disagreement without trying to convince someone of your point of view. Um, and it's something about empowering each other to ask for what you need. So from what I've said, what would be useful is if somebody could offer, you know, a, a resonance or a suggestion or, but yeah. That's lovely. Sense. <laughs> Yeah, so, well, we're, we're kind of out of, out of time for uh, this meeting, and so uh, that might be something that we can look at is, you know, having a period of time for doing empathic listening, because I, I do see that as like a core practice that just needs to be practiced and practiced um, and kind of deepened, and the book kind of goes through the deepening, you know, of that empathic listening process, uh, but we could have maybe an hour of empathic listening and then like an hour of uh, just kind of freestyle talking about how do we create this uh, curriculum and different activities. So the other group, we had the assignment of create an activity. You know, it's like design an activity and we'll put it on the, and you know, write it up and everybody can, you can 
present your own, you know, 10 minute, 15 minute or whatever activity in future meetings. So this is uh, just kind of getting the ball rolling and, uh, you know, we're, you know, gathering all these insights and with our divergent approach and we'll start converging on, you know, on specific uh, directions. So, um, yeah, so I don't want to keep us over. I always think that these need to be three hours so, uh, okay. for, for, you know, having the take. But, and also we spent a lot of time with the setup. You know, there's a lot of, you know, kind of background information and maybe that was, it can be kind of overwhelming with all the, you know, there's quite a bit. That's been Edwin, is there a way we can continue the dialogue through the page? Can we add chat and add comments so we can continue to talk? Uh, right now it's through email um, on the page. I mean, you, yeah, I don't know what the, do you mean on this uh, page that we have here? You can, you can write comments. I've been taking some notes. Yeah. Uh, so that's something we need to figure out is the, the kind of a, a mechanism for having the dial, you know, gathering information. We can have a, you have to go, okay, you sense then. So it's yeah, it's just for the time specific time constraints, sure. So, but we'll see you next week, and uh, we just pick up and pick up from there. Thank we'll, you, everybody. Nice to meet you, everyone. Yeah. yeah. Bye. Thank you. Bye. 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 Bye